The assembling of the cast, the Bundy family, you know, came from as many directions. Uh, you know, Katie, you know, was we found Katie because Ron's wife saw her um, on one of the later incarnations of a Mary Tyler Moore series. She played, you know, sort of a hard-bitten news reporter with a cigarette in her mouth all the time. You know, th you know, thought she would work. Um, Christina came from, um, I can't remember, it was a drama show. Um, Faustino just came from just general casting, you know. Um, and Ed was the last, the very last person we cast. As a matter of fact, we were supposed to go to taping. And remember, they were already in a hurry. We, they were supposed to go to taping some uh, in about two weeks and we still did not have an album. We must have seen every quote funny guy in Hollywood by the time you know we ran into him. We were getting very very discouraged because I'd say 70 percent of the guys that came in to read for Al Bundy read it exactly like Ralph Graham did because that's what they thought this character was and which t absolutely did not work. Um, there were a couple of people that read it like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, which totally <laughs> didn't work. Um, but everybody seemed to want to throw in something. They just wanted to spike this, and the character was already big enough, as far as we were concerned. You know that we didn't need you know the extra, the extra layer. You know we didn't need anybody kind of winking at the camera. You know with this character. And like I said, we were getting very, very discouraged because now we started, you know, at this by this point, seeing all the funny guys. We started seeing guys that I mean, we'd never heard of. I mean, stand-up comics, brand new stand-up comics, people were coming in. And I remember um, one day where we didn't see anybody. It was a very discouraging day. Um, toward the end of the day. Um, ac no, actually, it was right after lunch. Um, we got a phone call from casting, and they said, um, I got a guy I want you to see. You know, his name is Ed O'Neill. And it was like, tremendous, who's Ed O'Neill? And he said, well, he was the guy, did you see Popeye Doyle? No. He said, well, he was the guy that played Popeye Doyle. Okay. Uh, what, what, Popeye Doyle, what, was, is this a show, was this a, he said, no, it's a movie, it's a drama. I said, oh, we're seeing, we're seeing dra dramatic guys now. I said, good, so let, wake me when we get to the actual cartoon characters. I want to be here when Yosemite Sam comes in. I want to see how he does it. And they said, no, no, you know, get, you know, you want nothing or you want to see Ed O'Neill? All right, we'll see Ed O'Neill. So he comes up. Dressed in jeans and a and a and a t-shirt, a white t-shirt, literally had moons down to the uh, to to his pants. So obviously, I like the guy. I said already, I said, <laughs> I said I, I like this guy. And the particular scene, he apologized. He said, "Look, I had a handball game. I, I you know they my agent called me last minute. I didn't have a chance to go home and change. Uh, okay, fine." Um, I had, like I said, seen this scene written, by that time read, you know, do dozen different ways by a hundred different guys. And it was a very simple scene, and all it entailed was, you know, Al coming home from work, to only to hear, you know, his wife saying that, you know, that they're gonna meet the, bre the next door neighbors for the very first time, be on your best behavior. You know, Al wanted to come home, watch the game, didn't want to do this, but, you know, his wife made him. And we'd seen this, like I said, a hundred different times. Um, so Ed gets the script, and even before the first line, when he looked at the script, he pretended walking up his little walkway to the door outside. And what he did, the very first thing he did when he was getting into character, was he stood in front of his front door and literally went like this. <sighs> Before he turned it up. And right then, uh, he didn't have to say another word. I said, you know, he's got this part. Uh, because the Al Bundy that I knew at the time, that Ron knew at the time, 
knew, and apparently that Ed O'Neill knew at the time, no matter what happened, when he came, but when he opened that door, something horrible was going to be on the other side. It didn't. It, it was no doubt. I and and there was no chance of it not being bad, you know. So he's going to just sigh, and before he opens the door, you know, what? And he's going to be right. And that's basic, that sigh is basically what got Ed O'Neill the part. Now, you know, I'm sure the network probably wanted someone, you know, a little bit more well-known. I mean, this, I sort of understand that, but, you know, you know, this guy, as far as I was concerned, you know, was this character. <laughs>